Hi, hi, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Andrei Slastonov. I'm the project, man product manager at uh, GCore company. And before we start the main part of our presentation, I just uh, want to give you the short uh, overview of the whole project which we're working on because the coming presentation is the part of uh, this project. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone previously worked with our company, but at least uh, during uh, this event, I met uh, several people who are working with our services today. Uh, but uh, to be short, we are one of the biggest uh, cloud, CDN, and uh, bare metal provider. So we provide the, our services globally around the world, and we have our headquarters in uh, Luxembourg. So uh, together with all of that services, we provide the security services for our customers. And we have about 140 global points of presence and over 100 terabit per second of networking capacity. So as the result, every day we are facing large scale DDoS attacks, targeting our infrastructure or uh, our infrastructure of our clients or, or the servers. So uh, this year uh, we see a dramatic increase in attack power. So, for example, I just share you with you some numbers about that. Uh, this year, the maximum attack which we saw on our network was about 1.5 terabit per second. Yes, and uh, each day uh, we are fighting with just uh, countering more than 15 DDoS attacks targeted the infrastructure or the servers of our clients and num numerous of the attacks which targeted the web sites and uh, web APIs. So uh, in order to effectively protect our customers from that multi terabit, highly decentralized DDoS attacks, we decided to develop a high performance distributed DDoS protection solution. One of the reasons why we uh, decide to mm, just develop it in-house by ourselves, because we uh, want to integrate that DDoS solution uh, with, together with our CDN network. So uh, considering that we have uh, more than 1,000 of CDN nodes around the network, uh, it looks like that it's most appropriate infrastructure to roll out the DDoS protection and fight with distributed threats. So uh, as a result, we start to develop the code. Uh, the main idea of that development was not only uh, to protect the web application and web services, but to protect the infrastructure and uh, servers as well, especially the gaming servers, which uh, the main target for most of the DDoS attacks. And today, Ivan will share part of that development, uh, which we use to protect our clients on the layer seven. So we can uh, protect from uh, layer seven attacks as well as for layer three and layer four. And I think that's it. Thank you for your time. And I will give the scene to Ivan. He will deliver the more details about the part of our project which we developed and performance. Thank you so much. Hey, Nandev. Uh, my name is Ivan. I'm working in Jikor uh, and I will <laughs> And I'll tell you uh, how we protect our customers from DDoS attacks and how we build our infrastructure to mitigate DDoS attacks using XDP and why we have decided to use regular expressions inside of DPD, uh, inside of XDP. Uh, first, 
I will have to explain how our infrastructure looks like, how we evolved it, uh, how we moving it from the old um, centralized design into a new one design, which is more distributed, more ready to uh, networks of uh, these days. Um, we have uh, more than 100 locations all over the, the globe where we uh, have uh, points of presence of our CDN service and we have uh, much less locations where we can install uh, our DDoS protection system uh, which is runs on uh, uh, which is run standalone on a separate service and uh, which is forward traffic either to our network or to uh, networks of our customers. Um, historically, we used a third party solution for DDoS protection. Uh, as it works on the standalone, there is no problems uh, with it at all. So it can perform on just using all the resources so that system have and forward to the traffic, uh, uh, filter the traffic, which is we don't really need. And it was very performant. Uh, but the problem is that it's a kind of centralized solution and all the traffic that is targeted to networks of our customers still need to run from just a very limited amount of locations. It prevented us a lot from building a more uh, huge network, uh, which is closer to customer, uh, which is closer to end client and to provide uh, better protection from DDoS attacks. Um, uh, but in our design, we actually understood that uh, the traffic uh, Session is not really um, synchronous. Uh, our CDN service uh, actually has much more ingress traffic than ingress uh, because this is how the HTTP uh, works. And uh, we have a lot of free resources and a lot of free bandwidth on our CDN service. And we also want to provide more protection, not only to our customers network, but only more protection for our, our own infrastructure, for our CDN servers, for our edge servers that uh, provide much more applica application that it used to be. So we have to evolve our solution. Uh, in and integrate DDoS protection and uh, edge nodes where we run CDN servers, when we run DNS servers and other network heavy applications. It was very uh, complicated to use the former solution built off on top of DPDK on that service because DPDK needs um, access to a network adapt uh, and uh, providing very performant uh, um, traffic sync for <clears throat> network applications was very complicated. Uh, so we decided that uh, one of the best solutions to provide DDoS protection there is to use XDP and XDP can be uh, set up on the same service as we use for uh, in our edge center network and we can uh, use much more locations, uh, much more points of presence where we can install our um, DDoS protection suite that it used to be. Uh, of course, it's not the change that can be done in one day and we're still using a dedicated service for standalone DDoS protection, uh, but with XDP and with our solution, not with third party. Happily, we can distribute load not to uh, just a uh, very few servers that provide DDoS protection, but uh, to much more servers that can hand, uh, that are installed in our network. Uh, what traffic we protect with uh, regular expressions? So it's basically um, 
a game traffic. We have a lot of customers that provide uh, game ser uh, services for their end clients. And uh, these games are running in the real internet. So it's mostly uh, UDP. The traffic is very small. Uh, so the MTU is um, not very big. It's less than 100. Uh, 1500 bytes and um, even lower because it's need to reach the users uh, behind the providers networks providers nets um, we uh, also know that most of that game protocols are very well structured and we can use regular expressions either to uh, find oh, how the packet really looks like. Either it is a packet that is actually uh, for legitimate traffic and should be forwarded to a customer network. Either it is a traffic that is garbage traffic and we should drop it. Uh, another possible uh, application for uh, regular expressions is uh, just provide a uh, uh, something different uh, so to find the uh, pattern inside of a uh, garbage traffic analyze the traffic on the wire and drop the traffic if it drop packets if they contain that pattern so that is where we use and it really uh, it fits really good the the XDP because first we really even don't need XDP multi buffer here because uh, we need to work with only one packet by one shot. Uh, the MTU is small and it still uh, uh, can fit the uh, XDP limitation, which is one page per packet. Um, so it's very, very straightforward to use an regular expressions with uh, XDP. So all the limitations uh, in terms of the traffic are very well suited to such an application. <clears throat> I will tell you just a bit more how we built our pipeline to serve all, all that traffic. Um, it contains uh, a very limited set of building blocks that we are using and we use a BPF tail calls to combine a, a filtering pipeline that uh, can uh, process a packet. So first we... Um, pass the packet and find the headers layout inside of the packet. Then we use a five tape, uh, tuple uh, access control list to find a road for that flow. So what is the customer which owns the, this traffic, where to, to route it? And then we have a policy pipeline. It's a set of countermeasures we use for a customer. So it's again a set of building blocks that we use in chain and we construct this chain individually for each customer because each customer requires its own kind of processing. And it's very, very depends on the traffic they have. Sometimes we even need to rearrange the order of the blocks inside of the pipeline to fit the customer needs. And finally, we can provide a verdict uh, from the XDP and uh, collect the statistics that we need. We need that statistics uh, not only for um, understanding what is the traffic flows, how they look like, but we also use them as a source of, for the billing, for the um, understanding our network, uh, understanding our uh, traffic flows uh, for everything. So statistics for us is very, very crucial and it's they are much more extended comparing to F tools statistics that is available. Uh, regular expressions sit 
directly inside the policy pipeline at a, and it is not the last and it is not the first one Kotomija here. And uh, this is explains wh why we cannot use just simpler solutions like uh, find out which is traffic is actually game traffic and uh, split that traffic from the kernel and deliver it to user space application which is running AFXDP sockets and process that traffic inside of user space. So because our pipeline is very generic and because we really need to synchronize some blocks between kernel space and that possible user space. Uh, we have to synchronize states, we have to synchronize everything. And uh, the problem is that the, uh, the next proce uh, processing point of the traffic may be either on the different server or, or on the same server. And we still have need to have a very uh, high performance access to the packets uh, inside of uh, the next user space application that will be uh, runs after our DDoS protection suit. So this uh, brought us to our crazy idea to use um, the regular expressions inside of XDP. Running uh, regular expressions uh, inside of anything is not very easy thing. Uh, of course, they are very big and very, very uh, complex. You, it's not the thing that you are going to develop from scratch. You will just try to use something that is available off the shelf and uh, try to use it uh, as you can use it. Um, uh, the, another problem with the complexity is that uh, it's very hard and even impossible to uh, squeeze uh, the uh, regular expressions engine inside of uh, verifier and pass all that limitations of verifier and even if you done that it is not guarantee your success because uh, for fast processing of regular expressions you need a vector instruction set and this is, is not available inside of ebpf virtual machine and you really want this to have full performance of your solution um, of course there is a problems and they are always like uh, it's hard to understand what is performance of your regular expressions engine because it depends on the traffic on the traffic part 10 inside of it it depends on the um, regular expressions itself and some regular expression can cause a bump and they can be evaluated very very slow and they will slow down the whole system so when you have a multiple users and you provide the service from multiple customers you have to limit this somehow to deliver a best service for all of them The naive and the best solution to use a, a base for uh, engine for regular expressions is to use Hyperscan. Hyperscan is the very high performance uh, engine uh, that can simultaneously match a large number of uh, regular expressions uh, against the same packet. It is very fast. It, it is, uh, it's used, uh, the packet inspection very very close and there is a lot of application that use hyperscan engine like snot uh, like other applications like intrusion detection system so it's a standard of using regular expressions engine inside of just any network application it has a very uh, uh, comprehensive uh, run, C runtime that uh, is used for scanning for regular expressions. It contains multiple regular expressions engine uh, and it contains a glue level to uh, to combine all that engines. Uh, it is very wise and in, it doesn't uh, use memory allocations in the hot path. 
uh, it also can process uh, multiple packets in a batch which is frankly not available inside of XDP because XDP processes packets one by one. Uh, and uh, the last but not the least is, is that Hyperscan uses a BSD license and it can be used uh, like uh, inside of Linux kernel module and can be used with it without breaking the license and following and just it's just suit every solution very well. So, as I said, we decided to put that uh, engine inside of YBPF helper. Uh, the, on the all the kernels, we had to compile the, the hyperscan inside of kernel, but thanks to the community, uh, starting from the kernel 5.16, uh, a work to provide a functionality to register your own BPF helpers inside of loadable modules was introduced. Uh, this work was done during several releases and it was finished in 5.18 release. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, when we started this work, we had all only 5.17 release and we uh, had to introduce our own way to register a YBPF helper for XDP because it was not available on 5.17. Happily, on the newer kernels, it's not longer required and uh, the newer kernels are much more friendly for extending your BPF functionality using loadable modules. As I said earlier, uh, you have to run vector instructions uh, against packets uh, to, to get the more performance th uh, that you can. Uh, the problem is uh, that XDP is run in, in soft IRQ context where a FPU unit is not available because uh, saving and restoring the state of FPU is very consuming and uh, soft IRQ must happen very quickly and this is not you actually act, mm. Uh, can see inside of soft IRQ. So uh, we had to patch a kernel and we had two possible variants is to, uh, to load and store FPU per packet inside of our XDP helper or do it in nappy wild uh, context. Uh, when we use uh, this locking uh, inside of uh, our module, it's very uh, close to providing more robust solution to others because we hide everything inside of our module and we have to apply uh, the minimal patch as possible to the kernel. With nappy wide, uh, we actually had to patch the whole nappy to uh, load and store FPU when we started and when we stopped the uh, IRQ processing and it not only uh, related to packets that we need but it also related to all the packets the system process so this is not so uh, well suitable solutions for everybody so we decided to first target this per packet uh, saving restoring inside of our module and do this uh, and keep the Linux, uh, Linux kernel patch as little as possible. Uh, we also need to remember that some uh, subsystems of Linux kernel works with FPU unit too, so we had to uh, disable uh, interrupts and preemption every time when we load and store FPU on every context. So it also gives us some limitations, but uh, we hope that it depends on application and uh, doesn't really affect the systems that have very high network activity. 
Uh, yeah, BPF uh, API was uh, very straightforward in our case. So we just wrapped the uh, HS scan function with our helper and we all that we need is just uh, call that function from the, our XDP program like any other XDP helper and define what is just was found in in this application uh, in the, this packet uh, whether the, the regular expressions was found or not and decide drop packet or pass it so it's very straightforward as as every other um, yeah, BPF helper. Uh, from the configuration perspective, it's interesting that uh, so you have a runtime and you still need to provide a configuration for that runtime. There was two main possible solutions: is to either use uh, YebBPF maps uh, or use configFS to that. Uh, YebBPF maps uh, much more modern and uh, the all synchronization that you need be uh, between the uh, configuration plane and the data plane is already implemented and you don't really need to care about this. They also have a drawbacks. Uh, the size of each entry is limited and you have to de decide what size of the entry should be uh, before the loading, uh, before compiling the application. That is the problem. Uh, before compiling this module. Uh, on the config of has, it's uh, different because you can, you are quite flexible with using almost any size of uh, database for uh, runtime and you can create either small or very big regular expressions uh, at the same time. Uh, but you have to provide synchronization between control plane and data plane. So we decided to follow the configFS as a more general solution that can fit community that can that other people can benefit from. Um, so configuration is very very simple, like it was in the runtime. So all we need is to register a new uh, node under config uh, FS uh, directory and uh, compile and load uh, regular expression database inside of config FS. And all the, that we need else and just to either get the pre-configured uh, uh, regex identifier from configFS or add our own and use this as a um, identifier of regular expressions inside of yeah, BPF uh, helper. So it's very, very straightforward and easy to configure, uh, can fit all the possible applications as we hope. Uh, Let's proceed to the most interesting part of the, this work, the benchmarks. Uh, we cr set up a test lab uh, with uh, 400 uh, gigs connectivity. So we used a single server with two Intel Xeon processors, uh, uh, which are top of the line uh, of the Xeon Gold. Uh, uh, and uh, we used uh, Intel E810 NIX uh, with uh, uh, PCI Express Gen uh, 4 for, for better performance. Uh, on the traffic generator side, we had uh, previous generation of Intel processors and Intel NIX. And uh, so we had to use two servers to provide uh, uh, 400 gigs load to that server. Our aim was to achieve uh, at least 400 gigs filtering perf uh, performance on 500 bytes packets uh, because DDoS is when it happens, it mostly related to big packets, not to the small ones. Uh, we tested several scenarios of course every time when you speak about regular expressions it always matter how you build your regular expressions it always matter what is the traffic you are evaluating 
Uh, so we tested uh, four base scenarios. First, we wanted to test uh, the XDP throughput, so how many traffic we can process on that system because uh, XDP is not something uh, very, very close to the DPDK in terms of processing and it's still a little bit behind it. Uh, then we uh, tested uh, the easiest uh, regular expressions possible. It is uh, searching for the literal inside of packet payload. Uh, another case what was interesting for us is uh, um, more complex regular expression with backtracking and which actually uh, require searching across the whole payload of the packet. Finally, we tested it with the real life uh, regular expressions that we have from our customer that contains 10 regular expressions uh, for the same packet that can should be evaluated at the same time. Uh, they all of them use backtracking and since it's UDP, so uh, they all search from the beginning of the payload and they search for for a limited size of payload, but since it uses backtracking, so the total length of the much uh, string could differ. Uh, as XDP drop and XDP takes um, uh, have different performance, we also wanted to test both scenarios because in our scenario, um, we uh, not only need to drop the uh, bad traffic uh, which we receive, but we also need to forward that traffic to the protected server. And it was also important for us to know this kind of limitation. So how fast we can forward the traffic instead of dropping it because it's, um, because it's less efficient. We have to modify our uh, XDP filtering pipeline because um, uh, m matching the traffic using the ACL5 tuples actually expensive. Um, you cannot really optimize it anyhow except using a cache for that. Uh, but anyway, with cache, so it's always also a question how many entries uh, cache can proceed. Uh, uh, how many flows it can store, uh, what is the uh, adding and re removing rate from the cache. So there is a lot of limitations uh, and uh, the last net dev showed the, the great uh, research upon using a ACLs to uh, limit access to the net network and uh, it showed that cache matters a lot. Anyway, we decide, decided to completely remove th this part from the testing and make the test more um, maybe synthetic, but more closer to the limitations of the system itself, more closer to the limitation of the processing regular expressions. So this is what we s still wanted to do. Uh, and this is uh, still an example that is quite bigger than the uh, simplest XDP uh, takes or drop scenarios that was defined inside of uh, uh, samplers inside of Linux kernel because we still need to collect statistics to analyze performance because we still need it. Um, and we still un need to understand how good or bad we are with the processing. Uh, and we don't really want to rely only on the uh, counters or, uh, provided by F2. Uh, so first we run uh, benchmarks against XDP drop and uh, the blue line here shows uh, the line rate of the network. So uh, how many uh, 
packets per second you can see on the 400 uh, gig connectivity and uh, um, uh, what is the throughput of high big uh, of that, that, that uh, big uh, connectivity um, on different packet sizes um, the red, red line shows that it is uh, a base scenario where we have only uh, we are doing nothing but just dropping or forwarding traffic uh, using XDPTX. So almost no processing except collecting statistics and uh, finding the packet headers. Uh, here we realize that we are actually not limited by the performance of the, our processor because we had um, enough fr free CPU time uh, even on small packet sizes. Um, we are going to research it forward how to increase that performance, uh, but it was our base, uh, base rate where we just can work on and what we can ex accept on, expect on the system on that performance level. And then we ran all of that different uh, regular expressions and it showed us that we really can achieve the line rate on the packets bigger than 500 bytes for some packets we can almost uh, achieve uh, the line rate on uh, 256 bytes so it was very very close and it was what was uh, the most uh, pleasant thing for, for us that we actually reach that aim on our real packet uh, flows and on our real regular expressions. So it it's like the numbers we can expect on our production. Uh, the green lines shows the best uh, shows the worst uh, case possible when we had to traverse for the whole body and we have to uh, uh, and we have to process the whole payload of the packet to search that for the pattern um, we were happy to see that uh, 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 for the packets bigger than 256 bytes, we ha still have some uh, free CPU time for processing packets and we still have a lot of flexibility how to use other uh, applications on the same machine. So um, it was very fast and we actually happy with that results. Uh, when we switch to XDP pass scenario, is, uh, it is less pleasant because, uh, um, oh, sorry, not XDP pass, but XDP take scenario, it is less pleasant because uh, the uh, rate is lower here and uh, we just a little lower than the packet rate on uh, 256 bytes and uh, we see worse results on the packet size of smallest uh, size so uh, we also saw that we actually uh, see some performance uh, degradation because uh, we run out of our CPU time to process all the packets we need because our um, scenario here is worse because we still have to pass that traffic to the other server to emit this, all that packets from, from the NIC to so somewhere else. Um, we are not comparing here our solution to the DPDK solution because it's very complicated to compare uh when you speak with xdp it's the uh you can expect line rate on the small packet on the uh forward uh, uh example forward application uh, and you can expect higher numbers better numbers here uh 
because XDP is less efficient than uh, DPDK. Uh, other thing that is less efficient here is because XDP doesn't use uh, at this moment any offload uh, capabilities of the NIC. So we are doing everything we can in so uh, in software, we don't really deliver anything to hardware in this kind of the test. Uh, but we still think that we are good with that results because uh, when we switch from our old network architecture that was uh, centralized to a distributed architecture, we can spread the load on the more servers we have. Uh, we don't really need them to be as efficient as DPDK can because we can spread the load. Uh, but we do care about performance because during our transition period, we still have to use dedicated servers to, pr uh, to use this uh, filtering solution in standalone variant. Uh, so combining both of two worlds, so we can proceed forward with uh, XDP quite efficiently. Uh, we are pretty happy with that results. We already have deployed this kind of solution on some servers in our network. Uh, of course, total bandwidth of the traffic is not very uh, big here. So it's just a 1 million of packets per second and 1 gigabit of uh, traffic here. So it's very, very low traffic rate, but it's only the very first production test with our customers, with our early adopters of this technology. So this is what we are going to evolve and we are switching more and more service of our customers to use the new solution. Uh, Uh, I would like to add some things to uh, development on the XDP. Uh, so uh, we really like the flexibility that the XDP provides. Uh, how really can you, how easy to build a filtering pipeline. Uh, but the problem is that XDP is still a kind of in, under the shade of uh, DPDK. Well, every time when you trying to talk with NIC vendors, so they cannot uh, provide you the same uh, kind of documentation that they have for DPDK. So for DPDK, you can expect uh, the test, the performance test, the baseline for your performance uh, on every system and you can uh, expect a uh, um, configuration guide so how to get the more performance out of your system. Uh, we, this thing is not yet available uh, from the NIC vendors for XDP and you still have to do your, your own research to, um, to achieve some kind of performance. And it can be complicated because you still need to un understand how to tune this, what to tune, what affects and what doesn't affect. It's sometimes a problem. Uh, happily, um, this lack of support doesn't really, uh, uh, doesn't really mean uh, that um, there is no support from vendor. It's absolutely vice versa. Uh, we worked with Intel uh, and uh, our colleagues from Intel. Uh, so I, uh, Peter Raczynski and Michael Sveskowski, uh, Michael uh, Sveskowski helped a lot us with uh, testing the performance and they helped us to get the performance level of, of the systems that we have. And that was on the only one way to really test the, uh, if we achieve the performance level, we should or not. I hope this will be uh, better in the future. Uh, 
of course there is a lot of things to do uh so first we are going to do is uh we are going to port our solution uh to the fr more fresher kernel uh so we uh we will need less patching of linux kernel and we can use the native implementation of registering and ebpf helper to xdp uh we also want to compare how we can benefit from uh moving uh fpu safe restore operations to the nappy uh, wide context so how it would be if we can uh save some time on switching this during batches of packets uh, another important thing for us is to build something that can track budgets of uh, regular expressions. We have 100 customers and for some we ha have to use regular expressions, for some we don't need to use, for some we would like to provide a possibility to add regular expressions. And this is complicated because um, we don't really know beforehand what level of performance we will see on production if we add those or those regular expressions uh, so we want to uh, automatically react on these kind of events and uh, apply some changes to other filters inside of our filtering engine to make this less or more um calling the regular expressions depending on the current budget uh the next uh, complicated thing is when you want to give regular expressions to uh, end customers uh so some of them may uh, may just uh want to provide the best strict regular expressions they can and so they can slow down your system very very heavily uh and even some uh regular expressions can cause a situation like a regex bump then uh your total bandwidth can fall from 100 packets per second to to yeah so we to we're just going to pause here because we, uh, we are we are so going to run out of time it's always possible yeah po pause it yeah if you don't mind ivan will uh bring you on stage maybe because this, I notice this is a wrap uh, wrap up. We can leave that slide there, but uh, we can take one or two questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, since we're running behind a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think uh, the, the last thing that wasn't. Can, can you uh, can you put him on screen instead of the slide? Okay, so the GitHub link is there. The slides are going to be available. Also, Ivan will be available at the lounge. I don't know if people use the lounge feature here, but we have a lounge. You can set up tables and people can communicate there. So you're going to set up a table after this, right, Ivan? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. please put him on, on screen, if you don't mind, instead of uh, st stop sharing the video. And we'll take maybe one or two questions. That's it. And then please follow up on the lounge. Anybody has a question? Is uh, is the kernel or the, so the BPF helper in the modules? Is that the kfunk stuff? Uh, yes. So we actually took the uh, f f f function hs scan function and wrapped it as a k function in uh, 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 in the loadable module, and so now it's uh, able to be loaded uh, from the uh, XDP applications. So any uh, j just a usual YBP helper. Oh, cool! Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Next, John. Oh, you may have to turn on the mic at the bottom. I think. Okay, if I've done my math right, if you're doing 400 gigabits per second with 500 byte packets, that's 100 million packets per second. That just sort of blew my mind. Can the Linux, 
how do you get 100 million packets per second through the Linux networking stack? Are you bypassing large chunks of the stack in order to run your stuff? Uh, well, we're actually running this in uh, inside of XDP context, so we are uh, taking uh, traffic right after the NIC, so uh, and we are by bypassing the uh, kernel stack uh, and take our decision whether to pass the traffic to the next host or to the same system or just drop it uh, as it's uh, garbage traffic. But you're still going through no, EBPF, yeah, no. right? No, so XDP runs way before any of that. That's the point. Is yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's uh, we we can we can follow up on this after. The, there's a couple on the on the on the screen. Uh, so just one comment uh, that we uh, ought oh, this code to our <coughs> GitHub, so you can just get it there and use for your own projects or contribute to this code. That's okay. it. All right. So there's a couple of questions here. Uh, maybe Ivan, reach yeah. out to to the speakers, to the people. Yeah, who so asked, Elad is asking why not use AFXDP and not with CPU cycles doing context saving and restore of FPUs. Uh, uh, yes, it was the most obvious question. So why not using uh, just normal way how normal guys uh, d doing this in uh, the user space? So uh, frankly, we don't know in advance what uh, where to process the traffic next. So this is uh, can be either the same host uh, where we are running this. Uh, so it can be a edge networking. Uh, so it's a CDN node, uh, which is very close to the customer. Or it can be something really outside of our infrastructure. So it can be a uh, Several okay. of our, one of our, our customers, so it, it depends, uh, right. and we don't know beforehand. So that's All right. why so we please, are... please set up the table, Ivan, and people can come to the lounge and join you there. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's give him a round of applause, please. please.